we know how to bring in some materials into our scene because we brought in an image as plain and then we sliced it up and made some geometry from it. But there's other ways, more common ways really, to add materials to our scene. So right now we're just sort of looking at our scene with a lot of white paint on it. So I'm gonna go here, over here and grab this staircase model and we're gonna apply a texture in the simplest way possible. So I've got the staircase selected and then I need to come down over here and find the little beach ball. I'm gonna click on that little beach ball. Oh, and by the way, speaking of beach balls, you wanna be uh, in that same icon up here, this material preview mode, or you could be in the actual rendered view, although that's gonna be a little dark with just our one light. So being in that material preview mode, remember the Z key will allow you to get to material preview without even having to reach up here. Make sure that you can see what we're doing right now by clicking that button. And then we're gonna click the little beach ball. And right now we don't have any material applied to this. So we're gonna find this big, long new button. Some things are very obvious in Blender and some things are very hidden. This is an easy one, hit new on there and that's gonna create a new material. And I'm gonna grab this and call this stairs. And now we've got, you know, we know that the material that we're gonna create for this is meant to be on our stairs. The simplest way to do this, we don't even need to open up the node editing, the shader tab and mess with anything. We can do it right here. If all you wanna do is just wrap some wrap wrapping paper around something and maybe make a few other changes, we can do it right here. This little yellow button there uh, where it says base color, that's what you wanna click on. Go ahead and click on that and find, oops, come back, image texture from this list. And there's a lot of things that you can plug into the base color, but the one we're after is image texture. And then it's gone ahead and made the texture black because we haven't told it which image to use right now. But now we have this open button and that's what we wanna do right now. If you have an image already in your scene that you wanna change, like I could put the wall image on the stairs here as well, but we don't. Um, what I do wanna do is click on the open button here and then I'm gonna find find my material, my sand material here on my desktop, and I'm just gonna apply it to the stairs. And that actually looks okay, except we do have some of the smearing like we did before, but don't worry, we don't need to go in and do each one of these one at a time like we did on a wall. We can use another way to unwrap because this is just a sort of speckly surface. So we don't really need to worry too much about where, what part of the image shows up on what face of our geometry, unlike the fact that we wanted, you know, the beams to have the wood on them over here. So here we can do a faster way. We can hit the tab key to enter the edit mode. I'm gonna hit the A key to select everything on that surface. And then we're gonna hit the U key for for the UV mapping menu. Remember, that's the same thing as you have up over here. And we're gonna use the Smart UV Project option. So Smart UV Project, just, you know, Blender's pretty good at figuring out simple shapes. Like this is basically just an elongated cube with some ridges in it, you know? This is not too complicated for Blender's to sort of figure out what this was. This isn't like some weird orchid or something that has all kinds of complicated geometry. So it'll do pretty good just by saying Smart UV Project. And what it will do, we can just ignore all these for now and say okay, is it's just gonna, do its best job of unwrapping this shape here and covering all the surfaces with an unsmeared version of the image. If we do want to take a look at what's happening over here in the UV editing tab, it is useful to see what's going on. Um, it's going to do its best job packing the faces of the object onto the image. Remember, we're looking at the wall image. Remember how to change that? We go up to this little drop down menu and we say sand gray. We select the picture that we want to appear in here. You don't have to do that, but notice what it's done is it's not necessarily contiguous. Like this face and this face are contiguous there. So that's nice that, you know, if you wanted to come over here and create like a little like smear of mud or blood or ooze dripping down the stairs or something like that. Well, you'd be okay right here because these two are right next to each other, but then who knows where this face is? Oh, it's down over there. And then that one is somewhere way over there. And so it's not necessarily put them next to each other. They're not necessarily contiguous. Now there is a way to do that by adding seams and then unwrapping it more manually, but that takes longer than we need right now. And this actually looks fine. So you can export this image with the UV map layout and open it up in Photoshop or whatever and kind of paint right on here. And there is actually a painting mode here in uh, in the uh, the texture paint right over there. You can paint right on the surface. We're not gonna get into that in this uh, set of videos, but if that interests you, there's a million videos online that can show you how to do that. We can just basically sort of open this up and paint right on top of the surface. So a lot of ways to enhance the look of your texture map. But we're doing fine with this just by default on here. So if I wanted to move any of these faces around, I could just like we did when we were moving things around on the walls, but that looks fine to me. So I'm gonna hit the tab key, grab the staircase over here, and we don't even need to do anything else other than come down over here to the material tab, pop this open from the list here, select stairs, because we've already made it. We're just applying the same material to that surface. And now all we need to do is hit tab to get into edit mode 
A to select everything, U and Smart UV Project, and say OK. And now it's unpacked this upper level here, and it's doing pretty much the same job. So if you wanted to change the scale, if you wanted to rotate things around, you could do that all now. But I think that looks fine for what we're doing. So I'm going to jump back over here into the Layout tab, and let's take a look at our floor right now. So I'm going to go ahead and select the floor surface, and we're going to use the Blender Kit. Remember, that's something that's an add-on that you turn on, so Edit, pre Preferences, Add-ons, and then check on the Blender Kit. And it does take a little time to download that, but just a couple of minutes. Now you'll notice that up here in the Blender Kit, that's it right over here, it also has a tab over here on the end menu. So if we go off to this end side here, we can find that yeah, Blender Kit down over here. And there's some other ways to search for things, but I'm not going to worry about that. I almost always use it up here. Notice that it's defaulted to models, because I think it's meant to be like a model sharing site here, but that's a subscription part of it. So you can join the subscription, pay a monthly fee, and get access to a bunch of models that are on there. But fortunately, the material materials tend to mostly be, be free. I haven't seen hardly any materials that are that cost anything. So there is a little search engine in here and I can type in, maybe it's paving, let's try paving. So if I type in paving, we can see the Blender Kit is searching over here and I'm looking for one that is by this guy here, but oh here it is, it's the med medieval paving here. It's kind of a nice simple material. So to take a material and put it on something in Blender Kit, you click on the image that you like and you drag, and I'm just gonna make sure that, that little whisker, there's a little white line that is going up to the up left on there. It may be hard to see on the screen, but if I were to like move the sphere down over here right now and let go, it's actually gonna repaint my staircase over here because that's where that little white line is touching. So it lets you come in and like get a very small area, much smaller than the little preview sphere. So as long as I make sure that that little whisker is, is just touching the floor somewhere, I can then release my left mouse button that I've been holding down this whole time and then it's going to apply the material to that and that looks pretty good and if you want to try a different one then you can just click and drag and repeat it over there and again by the way this author here Vellum Duha I'm not sure how to pronounce his name but he's actually the Blender Kit uh, developer so the stuff that is created by him I think tends to be pretty good because other people can upload stuff but you know there's lots to choose from and then you're going to get into some materials that I'm not sure why these are showing up under paving but you know car paint whatever okay there's a lot in here and you can really play around feel free to type in different search terms in here and see what you like. Now, um, what I don't like right now is the fact that, first of all, we have this sort of smeary face over here, uh, but I think it's going to be a little bit of a problem in the fact that I don't want the paving stones to curl over the side over here. So we could fix that right now by adding a second slot to this. So I'm just going to hit the tab key to move into this uh, mode here, and I'm going to select that face here. And this is the face that I want to paint separately with a different material, but we have to give it a different slot to be in. So here's one of the places that's not so intuitive. This tiny little plus button over here allows us to add an additional uh, material slot to this object here, to our floor. And right now there's nothing there. But once we have this on here, we can either create a new material like we did with the staircases, or in this case, all we need to do is say assign. And by assigning, we're creating, we didn't even give it a name, but by assigning, we're opening up a new spot or we can come up here and say maybe like stone wall or something. We'll try a different search term over there. And again, you can play around with this. Maybe that one, old stone wall, stone dirt wall. I kind of like that one. I'm going to drag that down and just drop that into that surface. And again, the size is going to be huge. There it is. Actually, that, that turned out pretty good. Yeah, it's almost sort of ready to go. That looks that doesn't look bad at all. But you can see this is all the same object here, but part of the object has the paving stones on it, and part of it has this stone dirt wall on it. So I, I did that just by assigning a different material tab. So you can have different materials on the same object. Object. Let's go into our uh, UV editing window here and just fix the scaling on our floor. So if I come over here and I'm just going to select, well here, I'll just select all, control A, oops, and I'll hit the A key and I'll just deselect the one uh, face there that has the different material on it. And we're going to go over here and say, well, let's take a look at what's happening here with this medieval paving albedo there. That's the material on there. And you can see this one giant one over here. That's the, this, that's why it's so much smaller over here is because it's much bigger. Um, but we want to change, resize the size of these tiles over here. So I'm going to just select that and I'm going to hit S over here. Don't do it over here. It'll mess up your floor. Like I want you to do what I say, but I want you to do it how I pictured you doing it. I'm going to hit S over here and I'm just going to pull this outward until I get a nice sort of shape of tiles. I'm kind of looking at the way that looks good there. I was looking at the tiles kind of coming to the edge of the trench there. So I'm not cutting any in half. If you are, remember, you can always hit G and move things around and then reposition them. But that actually looks pretty good. So now I've got 
tiles on the floor and a different material down in the trench. I can throw the same staircase material or something else if I want into this scene over here as well. And now let's go back over here to the layout tab and just take a look at what's going on with the floor in the rendered view. So I'm gonna hit the Z key and go to rendered over here. Same thing as clicking on this little button here. And the nice thing you can look at is like, oh, okay, when we're bringing in these more advanced materials here, even though this is actually a very simple one, this medieval paving, it does have a little glossy map on here and it has a little bit of a bump map happening that shows that like it is the illusion that these pavers are raised up off of the floor. And then one of the versions um, that I showed here, I actually went in with a knife tool and I just cut around a few of these and then I just kind of raised a few up and pushed a few down and tipped a few sideways so it makes the floor look a little bit more uneven. So you can really enhance, and I only did it to a couple that were really close to the camera here um, where it would um, get the best you know results. So you can do that as well um, and, and add in different kind of surface textures. There's also something called a displacement map which I won't go into now because it is kind of persnickety that will allow you to actually deform the surface of the material by using an image. But just to wrap this one up, let's go ahead and grab our arches over here, which we have, have had hidden for a while. Now my arches are still in the array. So if I go over here to the array modifier, I can, I guess I can just apply them now. I'll go and apply these two. I think that's okay. Um, we still need to break up the ones that we don't want, but we can do that. I just hate group breakups. That's why I stopped dating twins. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the tab key select all and I'm going to do that same smart UV project. We'll go ahead and grab that here without even looking at it and we'll say okay. Now I'll go ahead and hit the tab key again. We'll hit the material properties tab and let's create a new material and this time we'll call the material arches. Great so there's the arches and we could just add in a color here but let's do some more here. Let's make this a little bit more of an advanced texture by going over to the actual shading tab. So I'm going to click on the little shading tab and that's just going to take us to this workspace here where we can see the node setup for our uh, material. I'm gonna make that window a little bit bigger and we can see that the principal BSDF shader over here is exactly the same thing that we have off to the side. But the thing that's different here is that we can plug things into it. So this sort of node setup here, you can see there's, there's these little blocks that are connected by these little wires and a lot of software uses this as a way to kind of do programming without actually having to write code. So each one of these little blocks that you can add and there's a lot of them, if I say shift and A in here, instead of adding in, you know, cubes and cylinders and things like we've been looking at. We're adding all of these different little shader blocks. Um, but there's a couple of ways that we can add them um, automatically. So I'm going to click on this principled BSDF. And because we turned the Node Wrangler on at the beginning, way back in episode one here, and if you haven't done that, edit and preferences, open up the uh, add-ons and then select Node Wrangler. And then it will allow you to do this. If I have this selected over here, I can say Control or Command T and it will automatically give me this little setup in here. So I have an image texture plugged into the base color plus these mapping coordinates. You don't need to worry about these right now, but we do have the ability to, from right here, open this up right now and go ahead and I'm gonna grab this image here, our little broken concrete image and you can see there it is it's showing up on our image and it's kind of looks horrible right now because the scale is very large you know it's sort of stretched over a lot of geometry really quickly but at least that's got us in the right uh, department so I'm going to grab this one node I'm going to say shift d just like you do to duplicate something in the modeling workspace now I have another one I'm actually going to put it over here and we're going to make a special map over here called a normal map and where you get these is you can either make them yourself once you know how to do that but in many cases, the websites that you can go to the download textures will allow you to download the normal map as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this color into the normal down over here. Um, we need to change the image here by clicking on this little open image box there. I'm gonna click this one here that's the normal image. So it's the concrete floor and it's this weird purpley looking one. That's what they look like. And that's actually giving lighting information to the software. And a lot of tools use this, a lot of 3D modeling tools and animation tools and things. The problem is right now is that you don't really want to mix, even though it let us plug it in, you don't want to mix different colored node inputs. So we're going from yellow to a purple. You can go into a gray, anything can plug into a gray, but we really don't want to go from yellow to purple. First of all, we're going to change this from RGB color here to just non-color. I just popped that open and said non-color. It's still actually going to work without doing that, but it'll work better if you make that little change. But what we need to add here is a little translator that's taking this image and turning it into something that this little input can read. And we're going to do that by, by doing Shift-A 
and we can go into vector and find the normal map because I know that's where it lives. But if you don't remember that, you can always just click on this little search engine and just type in norm and then find normal map right over there. And it's hovering around on your cursor tip. If you just drop it on top of a wire like this, it will automatically plug itself in for you. And so now it's basically saying, all right, it's going to take this image and plug it into this map that's going to turn it into information that this input here can read. And on top of that, we also have this little controller here. So you can see there's a little bit of change happening there in the scene. It looks sort of weird right now, but that's basically allowing us to control how strong the effect of this are. So I'll just leave it at 0.8 there. It's really kind of fine. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. A really important thing that I forgot to mention, when you're doing multiple images that are plugging into an object like this and you are using the UV coordinate mapping, you need to make sure that you plug in all of the vectors here in or else they won't match up. So basically what this is saying is use the exact same position for this image as you are for this image. And if you don't connect that little dot there, they won't match up. So if you're using an image that has obvious bumps on it that need to line up with cracks or seams or whatever without doing that step right there, it's not going to work. Yeah, K-pop, Jen. So in order for this to, to look a little bit better than it does, we want to go back into the UV editing layout and we can uh, unwrap whole portions of this. So you can see right now we've got the whole thing kind of very, very small. So just, you know, if we wanted to start off by selecting everything, we could just scale and then just make everything a little bit bigger. I'm just pulling up on this over here just so that the scale of the texture, that looks okay. That That's going to help a lot right there. Let's just jump into the... Um, the object mode over here, and we'll take a look at that in the full render, render view. It's like, that's that's looking okay. Now what we, we could do is when we go ahead and look through the viewfinder on it, who, who cares what's happening in these parts that are outside of the shot, but we could look and say, well, you know, the fact that this face over here looks a little wonky, I could go in and, and select just this face. So come in here and say tab, select, see where that one face is. Oh, there it is, that one little spot over there. And I could just zoom in so I can see what I'm doing a little bit here. And I could say, G and just move it around until I find a spot where I think it looks a little bit better. So maybe I like it, you know, with that little diagonal piece going across. Now you don't have to do that at all. You only have to do that if you find there's like a spot that looks, looks really weird. Like there's some little piece that the automatic unwrapping just did a terrible job. I might like, you know, tweak some of these here that are happening around on the columns, but we're getting really close now. If I go ahead and pop over here into this view and I'll look through the camera, we're getting pretty close to the view that um, that you're seeing in the final rendering. I'm going to go ahead and grab this, add the stairs material to it. Uh, oh, I'll have to hit tab and uh, U and smart UV project to fix the mapping problem. There we go. And now I can just exit into object mode. That's looking okay. And again, we've got lots of things that we need to do to kind of prune the columns in our scene here, but we basically got the textures kind of roughed in. And you can spend a lot more time than what I just did now to make these textures look better, but that's a whole nother topic. And I have a whole nother series of videos. You can watch those if you want to learn more about that. Uh, adding materials and adjusting materials and creating new materials is a re really a lot of fun, um, but we can cover that in a different uh, set of videos.